Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 10th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Pacific Ocean is here. You got the state of Washington and Oregon. You can see this system, it actually looks a little bit worse than what it is because this is going to be weakening and kind of making a slow jog towards the Northern California coastline. It will be spreading some clouds back up over the area. Some decently clear skies right now, and you guys may have heard we're going to get the northern lights down to some pretty low latitudes as we go through tonight. So there may be be enough break in the clouds here but we'll take a look at that and see what kind of cloud activity we're going to have because i know a lot of people are probably hearing about that on social media and then we'll take a look at what is to come as we go through the week and the extended forecast as always as we go through the video here this morning taking a look at seattle 61 degrees yesterday average high for this time of year is 63 and if you haven't noticed i got some construction going on behind me here i'm totally rearranging the room we put down new carpet and stuff we're trying to soundproof the room a little bit better here so yeah if you see that going on that's the reason we're rearranging everything here in the room uh the studio so Anyway, taking a look here, trace of precipitation, 0.78 so far this time of the year, and October is the month where we start getting more rainfall into the Pacific Northwest, and our temperatures are dropping off quite a bit. As we get towards the end of the month, we're down back towards the mid-50s for average highs. So check this out, the Tempest Weather Station. You can see all of them across Florida. Looks like a lot of the power has been turned back on across some of the Tampa region here and the west coast of Florida. And if we take a look at that station here, this is something else I do like about the station. You can see that the High Strip Advisory does get shown here. And if you click on that, you can see all the other stuff, rip current statement, tropical cyclone statement, and it tells you what kind of warnings and advisories you are under for your location. So if you take a look at that station yesterday, you can see the winds really started to ramp up here. But of course, with the, uh, a decent hurricane rolling through the area, you expect the power did go out for a while, but it was kicked back on this morning here. So I didn't check many other stations to see if anybody had their power stay on, but you can clearly see when the winds ramped up and the power went out. So if you want one of these stations, I uh, highly recommend them. Click on that link down below to save 10%. Now looking at the European versus the GFS on the right, we're looking at 500 millibars or 18,000 feet. I'll put this into motion and you can see that storm, how it's making that jog down towards Northern California. Pretty good model agreement between the GFS and the European. This ridge starts to extend back up into British Columbia here, but this is going to be creating some clouds. It's going to be playing with our viewing of the northern lights here, but it may also bring some lenticular cloud activity with it. So kind of a double-edged sword there. And then you can see the deep Gulf of Alaska troughing here with the Pacific North American positive oscillation. Really good model agreement between the GFS and the European. And then we're gonna be playing with this, the cat and mouse game with the ridging over North America and the very deep troughing here, trying to spread some systems back into the Pacific Northwest as we go on in through uh, probably the early portion of next week is when these systems are gonna try to start swinging through. Then you can kind of see a pattern change here as we get the troughing out over uh, North America here with the ridging out over the Pacific Ocean. Pretty good model agreement as we look 180 hours out between the GFS and the European on that. So this would bring some cooler weather with it. So we'll be watching that closely here over the next few days. Taking a look at the artificial intelligence European model. There goes that system down here. You can see it's really weakening by the time it gets towards Northern California. And then we have a fairly nice weekend coming up here. Some warm temperatures is supposed to get 70s in Seattle, for example. We'll take a look at those here in a moment. But if we take a look at Western BC, you can see that precipitation, the slow moving frontal system. It is decaying as it moves towards the Pacific Northwest as we go through Monday and on into Tuesday. Another system coming through Wednesday and then another one lurks out there as we go towards the end of the week and maybe next weekend here. So we'll be watching that closely and see how that unfolds. And we'll start getting into the details of those once we start getting better model agreement with some of the timing of that. And then you can see maybe the ridge building up over us after that. We'll see. That's way off in fantasy land. And then if you look at the fifth, uh, our 16-day uh, precipitation anomaly on the GFS. You can see the sharp cutoff here below normal amounts across from southwest BC and Washington. And again, the lion's share across western British Columbia. We'll see if we can get any leeway in this activity here as we go towards the end of October. And this is what the Doppler radar may look like here over the next 60 hours. I put this into motion so I can show you that most of this energy is down here towards the Oregon-California border. And you can see this is a weakening system. It is degrading as it moves into northern California and not much precipitation at all expected for much of Oregon or Washington with that system as it moves kind of off to the south and east. Now, this is the cloud cover as we go through the day today. So here we are through the morning. You can see we've got some fairly clear skies, but I, I want to caution you because the models do kind of overdo this. The European, it it's not that cloudy out there right now. So 
you can kind of err on the side of it being less cloudy than what it's showing here. But as we go on in through the day today, you can see the high clouds starting to come in here. But the mid and the low level clouds, if you get a nice blanket of those, those can really kill any viewing opportunities. But this high level cloud activity, some of this can be very thin and transparent. And so you can see, you know, what's going on. You can see the stars and northern lights through this kind of cloud activity much of the time. So as we scroll on in through after sunset here, you may start to see some of the northern lights. And you can see there are some clear areas out there. So there may yet still be a pretty good show to come tonight. But then you can see as you go through, what is it? This is about 11. You can see some of that um, fog start to form across western Washington. So heads up for that as well. You might want to get to some of the higher terrain here out into the foothills or the Cascades for best viewing for that. Now, taking a look at two meter temperature anomaly, let's take a look at what is to come this weekend. You can see things warming up here across the Pacific Northwest. Nice weekend incoming here before we start to get some systems as we go on in through next week. And then you can see the chillier temperatures start to arrive as we go on in through next week. And we'll be watching that closely. And if I go out far enough, you can also see how the temperatures really drop off across portions of Alberta and Montana. The first shot of some Arctic air maybe moving down. And of course, we got the Rocky Mountains here, which act as a very effective border for letting that Arctic air spill further to the west here. It really contains a lot of that Arctic air and that's something uh, will no doubt be seen as we go through the winter months. That happens every year where you get some of that cold air that just can't make it back into the Pacific Northwest because of the Rocky Mountains. Now taking a look at the European Pacific North American Oscillation, that deep Gulf of Alaska trough in there, that is, that's the positive area. And then you can see maybe the pattern change as we go towards the second half of October. And again, Pacific North American positive troughing here. And then the reverse means negative when it's, uh, the troughing is over North America. Now taking a look at daily two meter maximum temperatures. Check it out for today. But look at tomorrow starting to warm things up. Look at the 70s, mid 70s for Western Oregon returning nice and warm across Eastern Oregon. And then look at Saturday, look some 70s all the way up towards Vancouver, BC. Some warm temperatures there for the Willamette Valley. Get out there and enjoy this. This might be one of the last uh, fairly warm, enjoyable weekends of the year. I mean, uh, uh, it warm. Let's call it the last quite warm weekend of the year. We can still get them here, but uh, and you can still get nice weekends. But seeing temperatures into the 70s in October, it starts to become a rarity, and it, and it becomes very rare once you move on into, towards November and December. Of course, you're just not going to get temperatures back up into the 70s. So just kind of giving you a heads up there to get out there and enjoy this weekend if you can. Then we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You can see these temperatures really drop off as we go through next week, as we're probably going to get that pattern change here, and you see some chillier temperatures temperatures across the higher terrain as well as we scroll off in towards the following weekend. And if we look at the extended forecast, it goes out a thousand hours. A lot of this is just for fun or just to kind of see the fall transition and the temperatures falling off as we get towards the end of November. But you can see the temperatures here. And this is what I mean, the last fairly warm weekend coming up. I mean, there is the chance you can get a couple nice days as you go through the end of October, but they become increasingly rare. So get out there and enjoy this weekend. And this is looking over a thousand hours out as far as precipitation. The blue line here is the control run. You can kind of see it starts getting a little bit rainy here as we go towards the end of the month and there's the ensemble mean there's a hundred ensemble members here in the european weeklies now this is what's going to be going on over the next couple of weeks or so as well there's going to be a comet it's just um uh, it's just off to the north of the sun or just, yeah, just above the sun right now. And I actually have a friend who got an image of it yesterday. It's actually visible with the naked eye, but do not go look into the sun because you can permanently damage your view, uh, your eyesight if you do that. But when it starts to set, if we can get some clear skies on the western horizon, you're probably going to be able to see that comet, especially as we go through October 12th through the 24th coming up here. I, I'm pretty sure that if we get a clear sky coming up here on the 12th, 13th, you're going to be able to see it as well on the western horizon. So that we got that to look forward to. And a fairly bright comet at that. And of course, we'll be looking at this cloud cover forecast. We'll worry about that as we get a little bit closer. But here's the 6 to 10 day. You can see the above average signal here. This is as we go on in through 15th through 19th on through next week. Above average still for much of the West. But this is going to flip here because I think today the, the Arctic air is starting to show up a bit more. So it's probably going to start to bring some below average here. And you can kind of see it starting to emerge here for the Pacific Northwest and above average signal there as we go through October 23rd. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to get back to working on my studio here today. Hopefully I can get that up and running and get everything cleaned up behind me. Um, but otherwise, hope you guys are liking the channel. Leave some comments below. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.